but the the songwriting stuff um I, I really, I think it was about 12 years ago. I really wanted to get into it. And I love electronic music. And I just yeah. wrote a load of songs myself um, that were sort of um, real drums, but with electronic elements. And I pitched them to a company called Extreme Music, which is a subsidiary of Sony. And they uh-huh. have music, you know, on all sorts of TV programs. And, and they took the album. And that was the start of it, really. I, I used that to to get in with other companies and I, th- I think that's what it is you know you just gotta everything starts with a passion um and if you if it starts with a passion you're gonna do it and you're probably gonna do a good job of it because you love it and you're willing to learn from it so i think it's it's like with bands you know i, I started at the bottom of the ladder with bands and worked my way up and it's, it's just about being open willing to try stuff listening to people Welcome to another episode of Drum for the Song podcast. I am your host, Dane Campbell, and today's guest is the super talented Bullet for My Valentine drummer, Jason Bold. Before joining Bullet for My Valentine, Jason played drums in the very popular British electronic metal band Pitch Shifter, but has also had a very successful career as a session drummer, having recorded and toured the world with well known acts such as Killing Joke, Fight Star, Bill Bailey, Blaze Bailey, and pop related itself. He was also the drummer in the metal supergroup Axe Wound, which also featured Matt Tuck from Bullet For My Valentine. Jason also records drums remotely for commercial ventures such as TV commercials and video games. And some of you gamers out there might be interested to know that he recorded the drums for one of the Halo games. He's also a very talented composer and has written and recorded various albums for sync companies such as Sony's Extreme Music and Sky. I hope you enjoy this episode, and if you do, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and the Drum for the Song YouTube channel, follow the podcast on social media, and if you use Apple Podcasts, please leave a review as it really helps new listeners discover the show. Cheers! Welcome, everybody, and welcome, Jason Bowles. Thanks so much for being with me today. Uh, how, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks, mate. Yeah, very good. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, have, you been, have you been busy today? Any drum-related work going on Yeah, today? I've uh, I've been practicing in here. So this is my drum bunker, which is 70 meters away from the house. Wow. <laughs> and yeah. anyone else. So, um, yeah, um, I've been practicing today because we've got a tour coming up at the end of the month, uh, European and UK tour for seven weeks. So um, I always like to practice as much as I can, you know, and not get complacent. Um, uh, yeah, that's it, really. Just some domestic stuff. Took the old man to hospital mm. uh, for a routine operation. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I've just okay. realised how tired I look because I got up really early to do that. So, um, yeah. You look fine from here, and I hope oh, he's okay. I hope he's okay. <laughs> he's good. He just phoned me, actually. He's come out of the oh. theatre. He's raring to go. Wow. That's good news. Wow. Thank, uh, that's really good. Everyone, this time of year, you know, there's lots of bad stuff going on with the kind of oh, the yeah. older folk. And it's pretty scary. But um, no, great. Yeah, that, that tour looks amazing. So you've got Ginger and Atreyu yeah. supporting you, which is that's a cracking lineup. For people We're stoked to have them. Into it. We mm. toured with Atreyu lots of times in America, in, in Europe, and they're really nice guys. And Ginger seems to be doing really well at the moment and just offers something different. You know, it's a, a package that's got a bit of everything. It's and a great package. Absolutely. I like the fact that it's just three bands. Um, sometimes, you know, we're, we're told maybe to have an extra band on, but I, I I really can't see the point because if you've got four bands, the first band's going to be playing to half a venue. It's not good for anyone. No, I just, think three is the, the magic number, I think, yeah. for value for the punter. Um, but it makes the changeovers. You've got enough time for the changeovers yeah. and the first band. There's a bit of time to allow the venue to fill up a little bit before they go on. It does. And, you know, you got everyone gets enough time to do the set they want. Uh, I mean, you know, they've come from America, these bands. And obviously, um, Ginger, U- Ukrainian. But I think some of them are based in America. 
Ah, okay. So if you're yeah. doing all that traveling and you're touring for seven weeks, we don't want to be the, the band that's going to get the jip if no one's got enough time on stage, mm. you know? So it, it's going to be a nice tour, really nice. Yeah. Well, I, I noticed you're playing in Swansea, which isn't too far from where I live, so I'll try and come down to that one. Please do, yeah. You're, you're more than welcome. Um, I look forward to it. It looks great. And that new arena in Swansea looks fantastic. I've not been there yet. Ah. Um, it's a new venue. So, Is it? Oh, great. Yeah. So uh, you look, that's towards the end of the tour, so I think you'll look forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, let's talk a little bit about your, like I call it your drum journey. So when did you start getting into the drums? Like briefly kind of describe how that happened well i mean my my dad was in a band he, he was a guitarist my two brothers play guitar but drums have, have always been around you know from when i was little going to see him play but it really kicked off at school when my best friend um had a drum kit and we used to go down to the local community center every friday and i was about i think 12 at the time and i just got hooked you know i was pretty shy as a as a as a kid and i couldn't really find my place and i grew up in a village um and i just got hooked i just uh got a drum kit when i was 13 and didn't go out <laughs> just <laughs> practiced you know and i think because i was brought up in a village and there was nothing to do it made me more focused really yeah I bet, and, less yeah, distractions less distractions you know and i'm just glad I, I wasn't brought up in this day and age i think i'd be terrible with the distractions now but uh it's yeah even as an adult it's bad isn't it <laughs> it is yeah really bad yeah it's really as a, as a kid now growing up in some ways obviously they've there's all the benefits of having no like as a drummer for example you've got the entire world of youtube for free to, for learning yeah. you've yeah. got the entire distraction of the rest of the internet and, and all the streaming tv and on-demand stuff all the gaming stuff which yeah. is obviously Obviously, that was probably big when we were kids as well, but yeah. it's a different level now, isn't it? It's crazy. That's incredible. And, I mean, it's like you say, if you're born into this this world now, then you've got so much information at your fingertips. It's incredible. Yeah. Maybe too many opinions, too many wrong opinions, and <laughs> you've got to have the intelligence to filter out the crap on the internet and use it to inform your personal style, really, your personal journey, if you like. Yeah, and absolutely. Not get, too bogged down with the, the noise you know that doesn't mean anything yeah that's good advice actually because i think a lot of us spend too much time just scrolling through yeah like you said noise when it's, it's noise. not important it's not important yeah. to you it's not helpful to you mm -hmm. you know you get the odd bit of information here that might be interesting or you could learn from but generally there's a lot of crap out there and just yeah and, the, and like, well, I don't want to go into it too much, but like someone I read earlier on, Twitter makes people angry and Instagram makes people anxious. <laughs> <laughs> so just don't use either of them. Yeah. <laughs> and it's true, it's true though. It's true because it Instagram, is, yeah. it just creates, you just, it's people putting fake bits of their life out there or the best bits of their life. Yeah. And, and things like that. And Twitter is just angry people arguing. <laughs> no, it is. I don't get involved in Twitter. I, I don't bother with it anymore. I can't be bothered, Good. you know. And Good. Instagram I use for the band stuff, musical stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, we're, not, we're never going to post like negative stuff on Instagram. That's the thing. And it's wrong in a way, isn't it? But it's just how it is. You've got to realize that real life is, you know, it's not healthy for it to be incredible all the time. <laughs> And it's it's just good to be like that, you know, N not get too like way or too ooh, just mm. be in in the middle. Um, yeah, that's always good. Being yeah, being in the middle. But yeah, that's great. And um, yeah, let's not talk about the internet too much anyway. Yeah. But um, so so obviously you you started playing when you well you got a drum kit when you were thirteen. Yeah. What kind of bands were you listening to, or what drummers were you listening to, or who inspired you the most? Well, it was, uh, you know, Slayer. But the first beat I learned was uh, Ride the Lightning by Metallica. Wow. So, <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty and, uh, damn cool one. Yeah. Um, so Lars was a big influence. And then uh, Slayer, Anthrax, Dave Lombardo, massively, absolutely obsessed with him, you know. Because um, I found out he was left-handed on a right-handed kit, which is how ah. I am. And ah, I could, I didn't I could know. interpret his fills quite easily. I used to slow down the record with my hand, you know, and, and write down what he was doing and I'd perfect it. And see, back then, you know, 
there was no iPods or anything. I didn't even have a ghetto blaster. So on the drum kit, when you learn a song, I had to memorize it in the structure. Wow. But yeah. in a way that was good. But now obviously people play along to their, fo- you know, songs on their phone and take it for granted maybe. But back then it's like, right, memorize it, every fill, every beat, nothing in the room. And that was good. It was good practice to be able to do that. And it's definitely helped me in, you know, remembering structures and picking up things quick now. So yeah. Good That's test. Good. Yeah. Did you did you ever do um like in the lesson thing and, and write reading and writing notation as well? I had advice off my dad's drummer, um, and then I had a, a few drum lessons off um, a jazz drummer, a local jazz drummer. Uh, that was good for, you know, just basic technique, really, stick grip. Um, yeah. But no, I didn't learn to read music until I started uh, teaching, you know, not that long ago, maybe 15 years ago. In a, I was teaching at a music college, and I was writing articles for a drumming magazine. And oh, wow. I think um, what... Uh, what, how I learned was just using software Sibelius to notate my own ideas and um, yeah I just picked it up really and I can't you know I can read reasonably quick but I think if you're a speed reader you've got to, um, your job's got to involve that like playing in an orchestra yeah but, absolutely um, I, I'm not that way inclined myself no. <laughs> <laughs> some, so it's weird really some some like metal and rock guys are some of them aren't so it's, it's yeah. always interesting to know and 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 whether they picked it up later on in life or earlier on, because I, I, again, I, I understand it. I've never been able to kind of just yeah read it unless um, you've got a purpose. You wouldn't bother educating yeah. you. You know, I only uh, educated myself because I was I was doing a magazine, and um, I, I use it a lot now when I teach, and even if yeah. I need to remember fills in the studio, I'll notate stuff and I'll have it on a you know a laptop or I've got a screen there in front of the kit, so I'll put stuff up there and and replay it as well reference that is it cool. your room looks amazing by the way it looks perfect yeah <laughs> really. it does from that angle but it's a complete mess <laughs> ah, all drum rooms are messy. The yeah it's used you know i don't want it to yeah. be like uh, i had enough of that when i was living at home with the old dear keep this tidy keep that tidy no this is my right. room this is your room yeah. yeah i know i know i know what you mean so uh i i did hear on um another interview that you did that you do remote lessons mm. You're still doing that these days? I do, yeah. And funnily enough, you know, one of the guys I teach, he lockdown happened and he went to remote lessons and he stayed like that. And he, he's only half an hour away. All oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it saves on the journey for him. It saves on petrol for him. It does, yeah. I can it, understand if they've got a setup at home, why yeah. not? It works for some people. But other people it doesn't work for at all. Yeah. And uh, I've only got, a, you know, a handful of students. I don't want to teach loads of people because well obviously I, you know i'm so busy with the band and writing and recording as well I, I want to enjoy the teaching and keep it small and i don't want to let people down when i go away i want them to be able to teach themselves so we we pick up when i'm back off tour you know and it's good it kind of prolongs the whole education thing for them so you know because most people they'll stop having lessons after two or three years and find their own way and it's nice to have gaps in between lessons. You don't need a lesson every week. I, I agree with that. I think sometimes every week, unless you're one of these determined guys that, and, and you have the time to practice two hours a day or whatever, yeah. I think weekly is, is push, pushing it slightly for most adults yeah. anyway. It, it is. You know, working yeah. adults, I think, is pushing it. Um, Definitely. But yeah, I think, I think you've got a really interesting style. I've listened to a lot of the stuff that you've done. Um, Sadly, we only arranged this a few days ago. I would have done a bit more homework <laughs> if we'd arranged it in advance. But yeah, the the the, the two Bullet albums you played on are incredible. Um, so congratulations. They're very different. Yeah, but they are. They, yeah, but yeah. They, they're great albums. Um, the, 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 the most recent one, the self-titled one, <laughs> blew my head off this morning. <laughs> I was like, wow. And um, what what I did notice about it for for. I guess like a heavy metal album, a modern heavy metal album. So the drums sounded more organic, but whether oh. they are or not, I don't know. But as we know, a lot of metal albums these days, a lot of them are triggered and there's samples everywhere. They, they sounded yeah. very real to me. That's how I'm really uh, pleased you said that, Dane, because we were going for that. We wanted something raw and, and yeah. real. And, you know, you, triggers and samples are used on every album, even yeah. the most organic sounding albums. But they, they, they should be used in a way that augments and reinforces the real sounds and 
there's some like new albums out there at the moment and it, it just sounds like a drum machine it's awful yeah. it really and, pushed me off some some yeah. I, I struggle myself to enjoy it's it not, it's no disrespect for the the drumming on on some of these albums because they you know they feature great drummers it's just the way it's been produced but hmm. we're really pleased with what carl did on the album and you know we had a, i had a little bit of input with the drum sound but to be honest with you it, it's mostly from the natural mahogany kit i use the pearl masters mahogany Ooh. and that's warm, the toms are, yeah really warm and loads of attack mm. and the snare was, was this actually this is like a a brass snare by pearl nice. and um it weighs a ton but it just uh it sounds incredible you know it uh i had a ludwig black beauty and this makes it sound like a, a cheap drum <laughs> <laughs> That's on the shelf now. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good advert. That's a good advert for Pearl. It is, yeah. um, they should they should make an advert on that. Not that people buy magazines these days, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, you could put that online. Makes the, the Ludwig Black <laughs> sound like a cheap drum. It does. Yeah. Oh well. I, I I I've never I played one on a festival, a Black Booty, and yeah, it was pretty good. But they like, great drums. Yeah, they're good, and all, all drums are good. I've played. You know some great pearl drums all the yeah. all the brands i don't always get at my level we ask for because i play sona we, oh, can we, we, we always say sona preferred but then I, I very rarely get it on a rental kit when we do fly out yeah. shows and stuff so i'm very lucky if i get a sona but normally it's a sona's else. great yeah they, i love them but um but when we tour I, I can obviously take my own kit but during the summer we do lots of weekend fly outs so i just take a pair of sticks and a stick holder and yeah my pedals i take my i take my double pedals because i i don't like using random pedals I, i'm not good enough to just be able to just <laughs> i play don't think any many people pedal. are dane i don't think many no. people are it's, it's scary when yeah. you know i've done gigs before where there's been a 20 inch bass drum and a 22 inch bass drum mm. and that messes with your head <laughs> oh. yeah how does that work surely well, there's no, con no consistency i leave it to the drum tech to make sure he gets them as close as he can <laughs> yeah but yeah i guess but. it is it's like that sometimes but yeah um you've obviously you had a great um career so far with bullet um we won't go into how you joined and all that people can find that information out themselves yeah um, if they want we, there's no point talking about that but um yeah what, what what would you say your career highlights have been so far with the band I think um, the first time I played with Bullet as a session drummer was 2010, and I was thinking about it the other day, and it still blows me away. It was um, it was their first arena tour, wow. where we did uh, Wembley Arena, Birmingham NIA, um, obviously Cardiff CIA, uh, Manchester MEN, and it's just incredible. Like I only had a few days' notice to get ready for it, and that that was a massive highlight you know and then obviously i joined in 2016 2017 and right. the, the first american tour i did with them was was amazing i was blown away actually by how big bullet were in america because i'd been in a lot of bands you know and everyone tries to break america and it's so difficult because it's so big and the problem with america is there's not many venues in between three thousand and ten thousand right so if you know you can kind of get to a level where you're selling out house of blues 2000 and then there you get the odd 3000 cap venue and that's awesome and everything but to get to that that um like ice hockey arena level is so difficult mm. um you've got to be a be brave and make a jump or get lucky on radio or have the whole machine behind you um but bullet you know i think the great thing about the band is our fan base is very consistent globally so right. we're, we're pretty much like a 3,000 cap venue band on average. And in Europe, that goes up to 6,000, 7,000 here and there and the wow. UK. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's, it's, we're lucky, you know, we've got such amazing fans that, that help us sustain that. Yeah. So very, very healthy numbers to work with to, to make it all happen. And yeah especially these nowadays, days yeah yeah the costs have gone up incredibly um, oh it's nuts you know i mean like i had a friend down the road and he got uh had to come back from australia and it cost him 15 grand <laughs> for a flight and i'm like oh my god you know if that happens to us when we go to australia maybe later this year it's like mm. i don't know if we're going to be able to afford it but we'll see totally. hopefully you know 
that was just a bit of a blip. Hopefully, yeah. I guess flight prices, they do my head in. Um, obviously, it goes on demand. And I'm just like, surely they should just change the law. So you fly so many miles, it costs this much money or whatever at this class instead of it being £500 one day and then the next day it'll, it'll go up to £800. It does my head in. It's crazy. You can't, you can't plan, especially when you're, when you're trying to plan ahead for especially a tour when you know you've got this amount of budget to work with. Hmm. You don't have the funds maybe at the time to book the flights, but when you're negotiating the fees and stuff like that, you've got to look at what the rough costs are going to be. Yeah. And then you confirm the gigs and then the money comes in or from something else. And, oh, I can book the flights now. Oh, they've tripled in price. Yeah. Since yeah. You budgeted the tour. It's, it's, you've got I, to make that up some other way then or, or just yeah. take the hit. You take, you take the hit, you know? I mean, the best advice I've ever been given was, um, was my, a manager of a band called Pitch Shifter I used to play in. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. And he said, um, just remember one thing, twice as long, half as much. <laughs> and that sums it up. <laughs> yeah. Everything takes yeah. twice as long in the music business or, you know, to get somewhere and you end up getting half as much really as what you thought you were going to get. But if you think I, like that, then anything else is a bonus. I think that's, I think like that my, it's myself because yeah. sometimes as, you know, as a band, we go, oh, this fee we get offered these great fees for these festivals. And in my head, I just half it. I'm like withholding yeah. tax, commissions. Withholding tax. And, and How does that work? It's, well, they just steal money off you. Do you get it back? The, is yeah. it withheld? Do you get it back? There's ways of claiming it back, but it's a long... We, we spent about three years trying to get some withholding tax back from our album advance because our, our record label is German. And it took about three, three years and a thousand... Well, I'd say hundreds of emails and, and paperwork to get that back. And we, it got it, we got it back sporadically over about a year. <laughs> we, we finally got it back, but wow. with shows, it seems to be more difficult. Like, cause there's too many different people involved and different promoters. And, but anyway, don't, we manage ourselves, my band. So it's, yeah. we do a lot of that stuff ourselves where hopefully you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, that's great though. You know, the ins and outs of it, you see, and I do. You know, that's, that's really good. And I, I know your band is, wow. it's, that's you good. know, it's great that you're doing it yourself in that method. Yeah. It's, it's it's sometimes I think it's difficult. Yeah. And we're all, we're, we all have our own little jobs, but you know, when it comes down to, yeah, it's, there's probably certain things we can't achieve at the moment. And sometimes we might need to take that jump and get a manager, mm. but then we're giving away more money, but hopefully they can, make us earn more money so that's the yeah. the you know the balance really apologies for interrupting this episode of drum for the song i really hope you're enjoying it so far i just wanted to take a few moments to tell you about my patreon page This is a place where you can support the podcast in exchange for some bonus content. You can head over to patreon.com forward slash drum for the song. There are three tiers available at the moment. One is £3 a month, one is £5 a month, and the other one is £10 a month. Each tier grants you access to exclusive benefits, which include bonus episodes, early access to the main episodes, private Facebook group membership, merch discounts, discount on Motorhead beer, as well as a monthly competition to win Motorhead beer, access to Skype chats with me, asking my guests questions, occasional free gifts like drumsticks, free tickets to Phil Campbell and the Bastard Sons shows, and your name in the episode description. If you regularly enjoy the podcast and think you would enjoy those benefits too, please consider signing up. If you didn't already know, I do everything for this podcast all by myself. So I do all the contacting, all the research, all the interviews, all the audio editing, all the video editing, all the artwork, all the uploading. I write all the descriptions. I build the website. Everything is just me. So essentially, the money from the subscriptions helps me keep a bit of time free during my weeks so I can continue making the podcast for you guys. 
So again, that's patreon.com forward slash drum for the song. Check it out and enjoy the rest of the episode. Drum for the song podcast. Because you were obviously you started doing a lot of session work with bands. Hmm. Um, obviously, I know you've been in pitch shifter as well, but what would you say for people listening to this who are maybe not really in a band yet or they're learning? What would you say the pros and cons of being a session drummer are, and then the pros and cons of being in in a band in a, as a band member? Well, if you're a session guy or girl, then you've got the variety. Uh, you know exactly what you're going to get paid. Um, yeah, that's, true. that's massive. You can walk away from all the mess and the politics and any other stuff that's going on. Yeah. But the problem is sometimes, you, well, pretty much when I was a session drummer, you know, unless I was lucky and had like a eight month tour, it was normally like it's a six week tour. Then there's an album in the studio and then nothing. It was like three months and then it's like, ah, but something mm. would always happen. And I'd love the challenge of it. I'd love, because a lot of, a lot of the time you're sort of caught up to jump in when someone's broken an arm or something's happened and you yeah. haven't, it's not ideal. You, you haven't got any time to get ready. You just got to do it and not say no and go for it. Yeah, say yes. Yeah, and because that, that's how you build your career as a session person, being able to stand in or whatever you know, fill in and stuff. Yeah, uh, but that yeah, obviously the drawback is it's not consistent, and there's not many unless you're top of the tree, you know, which is a very small amount of people. You can't get a consistent way of living. So. In a way, it made me look at other ways of earning money, like doing composing, writing sync music, which yeah. I still do because I love it. And I, the teaching, I'll always do the teaching, uh, recording work, remote recording I do from here as well for people. Yeah. All those things combined add up to a, an income. Um, it's a sum of all parts. Not one of them you could survive on. Because mm. even with drum, you know, if you're a drum teacher, you, you get a load of people cancel before Christmas. Yeah. Everyone's scared. you're affected by that, and yeah. Um, but being in a band, obviously, you you've got a bit more. You've got security income. Um, you know what you're going to be doing for the next few years. And I mean, in terms of disadvantages, there are. You know, you always get like politics happening in bands that's normal normal life you know and you have totally. disagreements here and there but that's part of a band isn't it it's, it's the family and you've got to learn to work through those things and it's you can't just say screw it i'm gonna you know join another band that's not how life works is it it's like family yeah. if you can't work through problems with a band you're not going to work through problems with anyone in life so yeah, that's um, emotional, political challenges sometimes, but it's all for the greater good. You're all working towards this one thing, and so that's a nice thing. And it's, I mean, I'm really enjoying it because I had so many years of being a session musician, and I worked for some horrible people. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. you don't have to mention names. Yeah, you can if you want, <laughs> I've, I've had some horrible situations, mm. you know, and, and some great ones, but. Yeah, I, I'm happy that I, I know the people I'm in a band with. And, you know, we all love each other. We we get on sometimes and we piss each other off sometimes. Mm -hmm. But that's life. I think all that's the same with all bands. And yeah. like uh, people who are listening, like most of my band is my family. I've got two brothers and my dad <laughs> in my band. <laughs> Amazing. So it, lit so it literally yeah. is. The only guy who's not related is our singer. So you kind of get stuck in the middle of things sometimes. And yeah. family argument and... I know I'm normally on the losing side, but I'm used to being on the losing yeah. side, and you just got to go with it. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, it's it's five, it's it's five of us in the band, so if there's one decision or another decision, it's normally three against two or whatever. So oh. it's just a democ we, we treat it as a democracy, and yeah. that's fair, in my Someone's opinion. Got, yeah, you you can't have a fence sitter, can you? No, not really. Or you got to go one way. Me? Well, you probably could, but yeah, you've got to make make that decision really and because i said yeah. we we're, we're, we manage ourselves there's no one else to kind of ask yeah so sometimes the manager can sway someone one way or the other but um no that's really cool i am um, um, in terms of the sync music because obviously that like how do you get into that how do you become known do you do you put yourself forward do people come to you i saw you were on a, you, you recorded some music for like halo the video game 
Well, I did. Um, I did drums actually for that. Um, yeah, that's amazing. Was, I think it was a remake of the Halo soundtrack, and I recorded drums for it. But the the songwriting stuff. Um, I I really I think it was about twelve years ago. I really wanted to get into it, and I love electronic music. And I just wrote yeah. a load of songs myself um, that were sort of um, real drums, but with electronic elements. And I pitched them to a company called Extreme Music, which is a subsidiary of Sony, and they uh-huh. have music, you know, on all sorts of TV programs. And and they took the album, and that was the start of it, really. I I used that to to get in with other companies, and I th- I think that's what it is. You know, you just got to everything starts with a passion. Um, and if you if it starts with a passion, you're going to do it, and you're probably going to do a good job of it because you love it and you're willing to learn from it so i think it's it's like with bands you know i I started at the bottom of the ladder with bands and worked my way up and it's it's just about being open willing to try stuff listening to people um and then i I got some work with sat v which is the sky oh they uh it's a music label that writes albums for sky and i do briefs for them you know every, every now and then i've been doing that for 10 years and uh I love it because it's, it's challenging. So it's anything from cinematic stuff, orchestra stuff. We we did stuff in um, Budapest with an orchestra, uh, me and a few other composers, um, and like drum albums and like uh, hip hop stuff. And I like the variety. You know, I, yeah, that sort of um, it it feeds my appetite for variety, which is what obviously I, I don't get with being a session musician. But I get it with a, being a composer now, and I love that. And uh, like Bullet is my sort of um, my my drumming gymnasium, if you like. <laughs> so. Tell me about it. <laughs> I don't know how you. Well, like I, I'm not. I, I never class myself as a metal drummer. Yes, I use a double kick pedal. Yeah, I have a relatively small drum kit, but I ne- I've never classed myself as a me- heavy metal drummer. Yeah. and I certainly can't do a lot of the things I'd like to be able to. But I've, ne- I've never been in that project that requires it, so it's never pushed yeah, me far though, enough to force me to to do it. You know, it's I when I I used to I wanted to match Dave Lombardo's double kick speed. You know, when I was fourteen, and um, yeah, there you go, yeah. And it, it, it's always been there, but I always have to work on it. You know, I, I I'm scared if I don't play the drums for more than two weeks. Wow, yeah, yeah. So I have to, you know, I love practicing, and um, you know, I I. At the moment, I'm in this routine where I'll come in, I'll go through the as many bullet songs as I can. Tomorrow, I won't do as much, and then Wednesday, I'll I'll do some more, and I'll I'll try and, try and do that three or four times this week. But I also want to practice stuff that I want to do as well, you know, different techniques and things um, to come up with different ideas. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's just keeping it all the plate spinning. You, definitely it's not nothing's easy otherwise everyone would be doing it that's what yeah, they say isn't it yeah exactly that's a good point and so that, that's a good point Phys- physically it's obviously very difficult do you have any particular like warm-up routines before a tour before a show mm. that to, to be able to pull the things that you do off it's more up here you know yeah it's, it's, okay i mean i'll go through the set on a warm-up kit backstage most oh, of the cool. set before a gig and that that that's... just gets me in the zone and because the strangest things can happen live when you're used to playing the simplest songs, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Oh my god, it's just mental. Like you, I remember in the early days with Bullet, I'd look out at the crowd and really get into it, and then I'd be like, "Shit, where am I in the song? <laughs> Is this like the first chorus or the second chorus? <laughs> if it's the second one, there's a bridge coming up, and I don't want to stop if." it's a verse Ooh. and i'm looking at jamie the bass player where are is it the second yeah yeah oh <laughs> <laughs> but what if he was what if he was doing the same thing you were both last I yeah i know I, i've been in that situation and normally you work it out in the end you work it but... out because you, you have to it's trust in yourself you know and yeah you, you get the sense of everyone's movements on stage where you are and but it taught me a lesson it's because if you you know doing that and at a festival in front of hundred thousand people it's not funny when it's being streamed live as well. <laughs> wow. I don't really get nervous unless I know it's being streamed because I know yeah. I can't undo it. If yeah. I, if it's, if it's, it's a big gig, yeah, we do big gigs sometimes. And, you know, if it's not being recorded or anything, you know, stuff happens, people make mistakes. 
you move yeah. on. You, you 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 professionally find a way of just carrying on. Mm-hmm. But if if that's on the internet forever, it makes you look a bit silly. <laughs> but then we're in that massive boat, aren't we, with everyone else? Then yeah, that's the way I think. You know, that, and the gig is what it is at that moment, and it should be embraced. Whatever yeah. happens will happen, and that's yeah. that moment. And then after it's gone, on it'd to be the boring next if. It- yeah, it'd be boring if it was perfect. It if every would. gig was perfect, it would be boring. Yeah. Especially for people to go to multiple shows, which I'm sure, like the Bullock fans, they sound like they're quite hardcore and, and dedicated that. I'm sure you get fans that go to multiple dates and stuff. I, I can imagine Yeah, that's the fan base you have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not like Dream Theatre where people sit down and take notes. Oh, you know, that was a, a miss hit that night or a different film. Mm. Like, nah. That's, that's that's not cool. That's not cool. <laughs> this, 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 coming to, obviously coming up towards the end now. What's what's your uh, kit consist of? I know you've mentioned pearl. I can see Pisces symbols in the background. Yeah, it's uh, it's all pearl and and Pisces. This is the the mahogany kit. Lovely. Um, like I'm using heavy full crashes, signature reflectors, um, nice. dark crisp hats, and I've got some like funny little stacky things here right there big sna- oh this is knackered I, I broke this today all oh, right i was gonna yeah <laughs> it sounds weird it sounds awful at the moment i have to say it's the best snare ever the bottom skin went oh, i shouldn't have hit it should i the bottom Doesn't skin matter. went <laughs> so it sounds the- like a Sounds yeah, like Tim, a timbale at the moment. Timbale, I was going to say. That, it sounds like a very nice timbale. Yeah, it's beautiful timbale. Best timbale ever. <laughs> oh, that's amazing, man. Um, obviously, yeah, good luck with the tour. Um, Cheers, Dave. One, one thing I, I ask everyone before we finish, if that's okay, if you could be in your own band with yourself on drums, um, it's difficult for you because you've played with so many people. I normally say, not including members of bands you've been in, who would you have playing on the other instruments, dead or alive? Oh man! Sorry, uh, Hendrix on guitar. Nice. The guy out of Rage Against the Machine playing bass. Yeah, he's very good. I can't remember his name. Not me, because <laughs> he's a bass player. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, who would I have on vocals? Who's got like a unbelievably mental voice? Oh, it's difficult. Really difficult. Um. Hmm. You've got me there. Sorry. It could be Maybe Trent Reznor. Oh, yes. Because I like Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, I'm a big yeah. Nine Inch Nails fan. That would anyway, be really cool. I'm not sure if it would work. That sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Bluesy guitar, kind of hip-hop rock bass lines, metal drums and Trent Reznor. Well, you've got a, a bit it's, goth on it's it. difficult to be origi- no, uh, original these days, so that might be a way of doing it. Yeah. Get Hendrix <laughs> on guitar. I don't know. No, man, that's, that's really cool. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate you taking the time to chat to me, um, especially at such a short notice. That no worries, Dave. Um, obviously, people can check out your website if they want to book you for lessons or, or if they need Instagram's a drummer for a recording. Best. Yeah, yeah. Whatever they – yeah, Instagram is best. My website is just a holding page, really. It just okay. says, follow me on Instagram. <laughs> okay. Well, the, the Instagram is Jason Bold, at Jason Bold. Um, you said you don't use Twitter. That's Jason no, underscore Bold. It's on there. I can't be asked yeah, with it. You can find it. You can find it. But, yeah um, – yeah, really appreciate that. And hopefully I'll come and see you in Swansea uh, and do it. Watch we'll, you do we'll your thing. Beer. Yeah. That would be that would be cool. I really enjoy that. Uh, thanks so much and have a great night. Thank you, Dane. All the best, mate. My pleasure. Run for the Song Podcast. Thanks for listening to this episode of Drum for the Song Podcast. If you've enjoyed this, Please consider liking the video and subscribing if you're watching on YouTube or subscribe and follow wherever you get your podcasts. If you could leave me a review or comment, that would be fantastic too as it helps other people discover this show. Please also consider sharing this with any family members or friends who might enjoy the content. You can also follow me on social media at Dane underscore drums or at drum for the song or search for Drum for the Song on Facebook to follow the page and join the official Facebook group. If you'd like to support the podcast, you could purchase some merchandise from drumforthesong.com or consider supporting me via Patreon from just £3 per month 
for additional exclusive content like bonus episodes, video calls with myself, competitions, discounts, and much more. Any additional support is always greatly appreciated, but I would like to give extra special thanks to my top tier Groove Master patrons, whose names are listed in the description below. My name is Dane Campbell, and thanks so much for watching or listening this far. If you're a drummer, don't forget to drum for the song! <laughs>